when people ask questions about writing books, I think that's the most intimidating form to start. Do you ever feel that before you start a book? I was very naive when I started and I have this exercise I do work with the gift and the flaw of the character, right? And the gift might have been that I was optimistic and thought I could do anything I tried and the flaw was a sort of naivete about that. Now I am in some ways more intimidated to start a novel because I know <laughs> really how hard it is. Mm -hmm. But I try to preserve that excited innocence of like, just put it all down, just write it, just get it out there. Because I think that's where it starts. If you don't do that, what can you work with? It's like baking without ingredients. You know, you need that raw material that just spills out. And then you can learn craft elements to make that stronger. When you start with a new idea, how much structure do you walk into the pages with? Do you outline? So I never used to outline because I had the advantage of a lot of time to write my way into the dark forest and get lost and go on a whole bunch of different paths and then go back and revise and figure out what I wanted to say much later. Now I, I have to produce books more quickly. So instead of going into that dark forest, I usually have a map now. And I usually use these 12 questions to help me structure the story from the beginning. They're in uh, my book, The Thor Necklace. People worry, oh, if I outline, it'll confine me too much. But actually, you can still divert from the path and find really interesting things, but you just have a little bit more of a central path to follow. Thor Necklace is full of a lot of great specific writing tips for people who are jumping into that particular Mount Dark Forest, as you say. I have a couple just practical life questions because I think part of the barrier to entry psychologically about writing is just most of us are not privileged to have lives that make it easy to just write for long and uninterrupted stretches. Yeah. And when I met you, you were the single mother of two young children. You didn't seem like you had a lot of uninterrupted long stretches to yeah. me. I think it is about just writing when you have any opportunity to write. So even if I can't sit down for this many hours at the same time every day, it's on my mind. And <laughs> then when I have that free time, I'm hopefully downloading uh, whatever I can come up with. It's just the luxury that most people don't have anymore to be able to sit for long hours and dream and write and read, you know, right? We're working. So you have to fit it in as you can. As your children were growing up, do you feel like they had a pretty good understanding of what you do for a living and to give you space and all of that? Or was it just like, I don't know, sometimes she's typing. I still, I need shit. So this is my office. This is also, as you can see, there's the kitchen behind me. Mm -hmm. The living room is here. There's no doors. So <laughs> I basically had kids running back and forth and in and out and dogs and et cetera. But it's multitasking, you know, it's fitting it in when you can. Sometimes it's, I have a friend who gets up at 4.30 in the morning. You know, she has three kids. There's people that write late at night. There's ways to sort of fit it in as best you can and know that it's going to be imperfect and the work might be imperfect and you can revisit it and edit it later, maybe when you do have more unbroken time and use this time to just pour out whatever can, comes out. 